All right, we're back. Uh, oh, oh shoot, I've got to tweet. Oh no, I've got. Tweeted, motherfucker. <laughs> Tweeted to hell, motherfucker. Wait, what? Your account may not be allowed to perform his action. Huh? Huh? What'd you? Do? I don't know. Right. You, you, oh, there you go. You've been, oh. <laughs> you've, been, you've, been, you've been sending softcore prawn, haven't you? <laughs> nah, Elon Musk uh, doesn't like me anymore. I said too many bad things about X. I call it Twitter still, you know. What can you do? <laughs> Stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk won't have shit on me. <laughs> All right, tweet has been sent. That was weird. I was like, you may not perform this action for time being or whatever he said. That was very strange. All right, well, in any case, hello, everyone. It's a, I guess that's how we have it started. Thanks, Musk. Anyway, uh, what isn't so musky is uh, fighting game stuff. And then we're going to talk about... Um, the Summer Game Fest sort of opening, I guess you could say. I I, I think there's more, right? But well, we'll talk about it nonetheless. And then um, got some movies. Well, I, I should say visual entertainment stuff at the end. So we'll we'll try to get to that in a orderly fashion here, as always. But uh, let's go start with this. You know. <laughs> And then, um, please get off of the fucking road. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then now we can start with the fighting game news with Atheus. This battle is about to explode. All right. <laughs> it got diffused really fast. Yeah. Um, because everyone talked like an adult. <laughs> and, my background of my face cam or whatever, I have the season two pass image or whatever for Street Fighter Six. We'll definitely get to that in a bit. And then we have Zal over here with the Elena and Akuma, what is it, SF4 ending screenshot. So, you know, very, for very good reasons. Very good reasons. We'll get to that in a bit. But uh, I just wanted to point this out. Hmm? No. Nah. I was like, yep, it, it, very good reason because um, Capcom uh, released a. Uh, the lore drop that yes they they are dating <laughs> they've been dating for two days two days <laughs> <laughs> that's funny all right so oh hello okay go question it uh, i'm not gonna question their 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 uh their love i'm just gonna be like mm -hmm. It's like, girl, you, you took away Ryu's uh, second husband. What'd you do? <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Who's his first? So I guess... Guy. <laughs> yeah. So I guess the quest for Harada trying to understand Waffle House and just American culture yeah. in general continues because he's he had this, like, um, quote tweet or something. He's just, like, basically saying, like, he got a lot of information and just, like, uh, there was a recent video of yet yeah, another Waffle House fight with the workers and customers, mm -hmm. you know, and he just like, like, why? He's like, why? Why is this happening? Like, uh, you know, I, he's never seen stuff like this in Japan. You know, of course, like, it's very rare to see something like that. Um, even with like, uh, there's a lot of drunk people in Japan because they like to drink after work. But even then, it's pretty rare to see like, like fights, like go out and stuff like that and you even like think like oh japan you know yakuza you know they got all yeah, this stuff like, no. no they don't even, even that that's doesn't just, happen uh, mm -hmm. that's kind of like not really fabricated media but more like um overblown media yeah yeah like, like movies and hollywood basically likes to like portray 
you know places in a certain way Japan, definitely you know japan was like oh they got they got a bunch of robots and and like vending machines i mean yeah we have vending machines but it's not all that like you know <laughs> you know what i, I mean? mean but that what that one true thing about japan having you know a army of gundams underneath mount fuji <laughs> <laughs> oh shit oh shit i was supposed to say that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> right so yeah basically harada's like just confused like why is this sort of culture a thing here in the states and yeah i mean uh, I, that is a good question um it's not just a black and white answer it's very a lot very gray in there a lot of areas it's just yeah. you know history goes back way way back you know with how people um had their conflicts with each other and it's not and it, you know pe people are gonna say like oh yeah you know, you know whites and blacks and whatever right i mean i don't mean to like make it all racial but it's kind of like a kind of a, it is a factor because obviously america is like you know um the melting pot right like with a bunch of you know cultures and races and you know different uh ways of thinking and stuff like that too I, not only that you know you know it, it also roots from like even you know uh the early gangsters right and um funny enough like so the early some of the early gangsters are are irish you know it's not it's not black or it's not you know it's not just black or anything it's, it's you know like specifically irish uh maybe some italian stuff like that it, it's it's you know it's um quite quite what not what people expect you know but um there, 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 there's just a lot of things that add up to this point you know you know especially there's a lot of factors and i guess you want to say i guess more like communal you know, like community help mm -hmm. to shape what waffle house is and right 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 there's just a lot of things you know america has just a lot of people and i think that of itself is a double-edged sword like, yeah, you can learn about people's cultures and stuff like that, but at the same time, because there's so much different cultures and races and ideals and uh, philosophies and such, such like that, of course, you're going to have some confliction and they're going to be like, you're wrong and I'm right, or my culture is with this, yeah. this, that, and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's, you know, kind of where, where it's um, part, I would say partially at least rooted from, which is why we have these problems in america with you know society and stuff like that and you know you have all the the you know, i guess you could say wokeness and stuff in this one play uh, in one area and then this other thing has this issue and then blah, blah blah like you know there's just a lot of things so i understand the confusion mr harada sir harada -san, but there's just a lot of things even we don't know you know we can't really like explain you know it's just a lot of things going on you know and it's funny you know even uh, IGN kind of reported it once again, like, oh, you know, Harada's confused about uh, what goes on at Waffle House and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. Like, why? You know? Uh, but it's just so funny, like, you know, someone like Harada-san is just so fascinated with this particular thing, this one particular thing, like Waffle House. Like, why Why there are, are these fights at Waffle House? And, and yeah, I mean, to be fair, it is a good question because we don't really have a, a straight answer to that, you know? It's yeah. like, it's like Harada just, it's just, um, a new stage area for, um, after, uh, um, after school fights, pretty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you, you had the, we had our, you know, schoolyard fights where everyone gathered. So we got to find more, more places to have that gathering. Yeah, I guess so. Right. And yeah. And, and, and to clarify things, this is, this is like very common when it comes to like late night stuff like you know like the sort of the graveyard shift when yeah people are drunk or people are high or whatever they're on and that also adds up to the thing that we see as a common thing in waffle house sadly but you know it's 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 funny it's like why 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 is it waffle house right it's not like denny's or it's not like you know um like mcdonald's or you know or just or, or, or like any of those like 24 hour chains or anything like that or late night restaurants right it's always waffle house that gets recorded filmed and then they you know put it on social media it's always waffle house for some reason right you know for the most part you know 
it's uh, it, it 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 is a uh, yeah it is something to think about i guess you know in a way but i don't know I, I at the end of the day i think it's just funny that someone like harada you know game developer in japan kind of looks into this sort of stuff tries to understand right um uh, yep. what goes on in different places in the world yeah so um another thing i thought i had it here but i think it's right here one uh, more thing. yeah okay maybe it's not this exact one but um He also goes out his way to like, uh, what what was that tweet? Um, he actually goes out his way to explain certain things, like um, there was a tweet where uh, it was kind of like a clip. Yeah, okay, right here, where um, Nina has a move. She stomps on people when they're on the ground, and when you stomp on Reina. She says, you know, easel, which is like, um, typically translated to like, that's nice or something like, like something like yeah. that. But easel is not just that it has a lot of meaning to it, you know, more than just that it has like different sort of, it depends on like the nuances and the context and everything. And that's kind of, kind of common with like a lot of Japanese phrases. It has, it's not just this one thing. It's that it, it like can be used in different uh, situations depending on the context or um you know like the uh it depends on the case i guess you say it's like they very case by case which is like why um <laughs> went on his way to explain that and you see this entire like just look at this look at how long That's he's an essay everybody mm -hmm. that is an essay if i ever saw one and he even t goes out his way to talk about um, Brian because Brian also has like a similar reaction, but he's like um, laughing when he gets stomped or when he gets like hurt, he laughs, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think he even mentions uh, Dragonov because he doesn't speak. So um, I believe what he is also trying to say is that when it comes to these characters, they're a lot more easier to um, localize because, yeah, obviously they're not speaking. You know, they're just laughing or grunting or, you know, a bunch of, hmm, you know, kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're you know, it, it definitely has, like, that practical use, but it also brings out sort of, like, different characterizations, right, for, for uh, each character, depending on where they come from, what the, who they are, you know, whatever. So, um, it, it, it all roots to Harada being just so like, he, he, he like explains things. Right. And then when he tries, and then he also go out, goes out his way to not only explain things, but to try to understand things. Hence, you know, what we're seeing here, right. With the whole Waffle House thing, you know? So it's just funny. I, I, I find it funny, but also kind of like fascinating in a way. Um, any any other comment for Harada san? It's just uh, for me when I see this essay, it's just pretty much Harada's just educating us in Japan, mm -hmm. Japanese culture. Japanese culture and so, also like game dev culture too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. To which I, I, I think it's like it's very good that, you know, you don't you're getting some type of education, mm -hmm. and free education, you no know, um, value of just like, hey, <laughs> the reason why we incorporated this, incorporated this into the game because you know we there is actual like a meth a method or a history with with this word because mm -hmm. uh, we learn like anything with e ne or yizo yeah 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 you know means or would always mean good because of the translation and depending on the um the situation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like when i heard reina say that i'm like oh because it's the tone the tone of voice yeah it's like oh she's just saying like oh, very good you know like fucking yeah yeah good she's, like she's being she's she being like that um smart ass like oh 
you finally land a blow on me good mm-hmm. yeah yeah kind of like that like <laughs> yeah and then he's trying to like point it out like it's not particularly like that kind of like oh that's good yeah it's more of go ahead i dare you like he kind of pretty much yeah. says it here i i go ahead i dare you you know like easel like like you know like come on like kind of thing you know um yeah stop trying to hit me and hit me yeah, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> pretty much so that, that, that's the thing about um particularly with japanese is that um right like like i said like the it, the phrase is, isn't just one meaning it all, can also be yeah. used in different ways uh depending on the context or the situation blah blah blah. you know on a case-by-case uh basis so that's what makes japanese a little more a little more difficult to learn just because there just is it's, just, it's very expansive in, in a number of areas you know it, it's um yeah it's quite it's quite fascinating to to to, to say the least you know I mean, English has its own fair share of difficulty and such like that, but man, Jap- Japanese is that it's pretty fucking hard because you know, um, it is. Yeah, like when you're counting stuff, you need to rem- memorize your units, right? Like paper and like like round things, and of course people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like when you're ordering for like two people, some people are like, oh, you know, say me. It's like, no, oh, it's. Futatsu, yeah, futatsu, yeah, yeah, Futatsu or Futari, like, yeah, 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 because yeah. um, you also have to learn like the kanji stuff too, which is you know, because he, fu, me, you know, that's he, he is one, fu is two, me is three, yom, whatever, right? Like, you also have to kind of like understand those things too. So, um, yeah. there, there's just, there's also the kanji side of things for J- Japanese too, like when you're learning Japanese, and that also that also is difficult to the point where even Japanese people or any people in Japan have difficulty memorizing all the kanji and stuff, you know. So it really goes to show. It really goes yeah. to show. Yeah, yeah, it goes to show. Like Japanese culture and their uh, language is, <laughs> you think <laughs> base level easy to understand. Once you get advanced, you're dead. You're dying. Yeah. Yeah, because um, like uh, as Hawk was saying, like the word he could be one, or it could be fire. <laughs> exactly. The, so it's like it's oh, it's kind of the easiest way to know what the meaning of the word you're using in in the situation. It's pretty much yeah. What is the situation, mm-hmm. and how are you using that word? Yeah, which is hard, but mm-hmm. I stopped learning Japanese. Japanese for the basic of kanji and I was like yeah I'm not going any further you know it's it's yeah <laughs> it's hard it's, it's it's definitely uh very very difficult to um to grasp you know uh especially if, like, if I, yeah. I was already crying after I hit um 10 like writing yeah 10 in kanji I was fucking yeah. crying already I was like I was like I don't I don't want I'm just gonna write one two and three. That's mm-hmm. all I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> We're stopping there. We're not going yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it does make things a little easier in some areas because, like, because Japanese is also a pretty visual language when you're writing it. Um, you can kind of like look at it and be like, "Oh, that's it's this person, right?" Whereas um, when you write someone's name in English, you have to actually read out the the um, the whole thing and, and then be like, "Oh, it's this." this oh this person you know what i mean you have to it's it's um uh it's like a picture you know like that you know people describe kanji like like their art or pictures and stuff like that it's very visual that's why you know you tend to like kind of memorize people's names in japanese by just merely the shape around the name and not just reading the name you know if if that makes sense um i even you know it's funny like my my mom uh like she tells me that sort of stuff from time to time like uh we at times watch sumo and sumo obviously is a bunch of kanji but there is a there, there was a time where we watched it in english and, and and all the names are are in english and she has to like you know like like look at the thing to just like pick apart like oh who's 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 next or who's fighting or who lost who won that sort of stuff you know yeah 
So, like I said, every every language or yeah, especially English, Japanese, any language has its fair share of the pros and cons or ease the ease and difficulty, right? Of how you learn and how you use it and stuff like that, and applications, I guess. So yeah, so I mentioned this though, just because Harada just goes out his way, you know. He really does. Yeah. He doesn't have to, but he does. He does. Because yeah, it's it's kind of like he wants he wants like a uh, you know equivalent exchange. You you're telling him why this happens, and now he's telling you why this you mm-hmm. know, why this is this. So it's kind of like that that sharing of information. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, that's it for the Harada side of things. Now we can dive into Street Fighter VI. Quickly, though, let me mention this, though, because I guess there's been some sort of challenge put out by Capcom that uh, they want to see more, like, the Challenger artwork stuff from different people. So that's why a lot of artists have um, put their sort of submission in of sorts, yeah, hence the, uh, the hashtag, um, New Challenger Art Contest, you know, Street Fighter Six New New Challenger Art Contest. And then I just thought bring up this one in particular because it just looks funny. It's Luke with the thumbs up and then just getting his face driven in by the, the feet of Jury. And then I think it's Manon on the right. And then the, obviously the big one is um Marisa. So <laughs> So this is this is wrong, everyone. This is not canon because the foot that will be touching him will be Jamie. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. That that uh, we'll show that video later. That that mm-hmm. fucking video did not help those two cases. Mm-hmm. Their cases. But yeah, like, for sure. Oh yeah, they're best friends. Uh huh. Yeah, best friends. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure, Jen. <laughs> yeah. If you click on the the hashtag, it definitely opens up more. You can like definitely see all these like other ones. They're pretty cool. You know. <laughs> Man, look at this one. <laughs> Man. Perfect. Yep. This one goes hard, <laughs> as people would say. No, oh, yeah, that, that's nice. Kimberly won. Went on. <laughs> no, uh, actually, that one's the best one. That's the best that's one. Like, um, like, yeah, not, not, is it Ugly Sonic? The other one? The... Oh, like Sanic? Is that, is that what it is? Yeah, that's yeah. Sanic. Sanic, yeah. Uh, that's Jerry, obviously. Damn, look at, look at, uh, Sheed. I know. Damn. Someone likes uh, Rashid. Got Cammy, of course. Oh, this one looks cute. Oh, it's that um animator. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. Pring- Pringus McDingus <laughs> or um, Amon Jiman. Um, I, I yeah, that, that this style yeah definitely is uh, kind of recognizable. It reminds me of like the '90s stuff when oh what was it um, what were those things like? It's um. Was it Tech Deck that did it? Tech Deck, you remember those little fingerboards? Um, oh yeah, yeah, Tech Deck. Were, yeah, I think it. I think it was like stuff, stuff like that. It, it, it kind of revolved around that sort of art style. At least, it's kind of similar anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, pretty cool. Oh, look at this Aki one. Damn, that's pretty cool. You know. Uh, I believe that's Cami. God damn. Yeah, Cami. Jesus. You know. Why, why is Aki drowning herself in? Um... Kool-Aid. Yeah, Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the uh, Fanta, you know, Fanta or Kool-Aid. Uh, we got Lily. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at that. E Honda with the the classic Japanese art style. Um, yeah. So the list goes on. Oh, that's just, damn! Look at that. It's like Picasso. Yeah, Picasso. JP. That's actually really cool. So yeah, the list goes on. Now make them. Now make them look like that in game. <laughs> First skin, <laughs> dude. That'd be pretty funny. That would be pretty funny. But yeah, the list goes on. Obviously, um, a lot of good stuff. So hopefully, we'll see a lot of um, choices being made. Uh, not just like a couple yeah. artists or just one artist or something. Like, I feel like it could definitely, um, you know, expand upon it for sure, and uh, put the artist's name out there for sure somehow. All right, so now the big news, the big drop, right? My God, and everyone died, and everyone, pretty much everyone died and went to heaven because uh, Terry Bogard 
Mai Shirinui, Elena, and Bison have been confirmed for Season 2's uh, Street Fighter 6 DLC. That's quite a lineup. And unfortunately, it is only four characters, but the, that, that, the, the picks are quite wild, especially with, of course, Terry and, and Mai. But let me um, bring up the... Uh, um, the video if I can. So I'll, I'll just bring up the video. We have our past like a few, long time for um, our past uh, podcasts. We are like listing listing down like what characters we, we would want to mm -hmm. see return or be new. I'm still holding out for fucking um Ingrid to Ingrid. Just, like laugh at <laughs> laugh at people going like who the fuck is like hey, hey, hey. <laughs> she's back. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it, none of us never said Elena. I don't think so. Uh, some people return. people wanted her to return, but they didn't expect her to know, return I'm, like so I'm soon. About between between me and you. We, oh, 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 we we, not, we didn't we didn't Elena. say no. We did not say Elena. No, we did not say Elena at all. Which is funny. So, uh, yeah, she is. yeah, oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, let's bring up this trailer right here. A lot of people were asking; they should just make up an anime of this already. Mm -hmm. They already went out the way to make an anime style trailer. Why not do a whole show, right? Look at that. Man, look, look how close they were. I know, right? And 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 Jamie already had his I, hair I, down. Like, look at that. I like that someone made like a like a little fast drawing and like they were kissing when mm -hmm. Terry opened that and he was like Oh right. He just closed he just closes the door and walks away. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> Yeah, I would too. I mm -hmm. would too. Two two grown men playing fighting games mm -hmm. in an abandoned warehouse. Yeah, I would too, Terry. I would too. <laughs> <laughs> I will be calling the cops as well. <laughs> yeah, look at look at that. Look at how close they are right there. Hey, Jamie already had his hair down and everything, man. Jeez. And, and look at fucking Jamie's like. <laughs> He's ready, He's like, dude. You, know you want it. <laughs> He's like you. You know you want it. <laughs> He's ready. No one's here. Mm -hmm. But no one was ter ready for Terry. And not only that, no one was ready for ta uh, Mai. Two characters, not just one. From SNK. And then we got Elena. Just why not? You know? And she she's older. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. That's what I like. Definitely looking older, alright. And then <laughs> uh, It's it's a god. Yeah. It's a god. No. <laughs> it's purple Sagat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look at that, dude. So Hair. <laughs> mm hmm Yep. Look at that. M. Bison first, coming in summer 2024. Terry in the fall. Elena next year for spring. Dang, that's a um quite a wait for Elena. But my yeah. My is winter of next year, but damn man, shit. Elena's the last character though. That's uh you know. When you look at this lineup, right? Like, man, that's that's uh that's, that's quite something. the pick. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, that's quite the picks for um at least for M Bison and Elena. Like, geez. You know, of all the characters to come out now or uh for season two, damn man. But um how do you and we also gotta remember mm -hmm. everyone who's not updated with Street Fighter lore? Mm-hmm. At this point in time, Bison is dead. He's supposed to be dead. Yes. Yeah, that's that was that's about why we have mm -hmm. like um Ed, who was supposed to be what his next vessel, right? Yes. Something like that. Yeah, he's like one of the bodies, like one of the many bodies or something. Yeah. Yeah, because Seth was supposed to be a vessel for Bison, but Seth became sentient, right? Yeah, he became self-aware, so he like went rogue and made uh like clones of himself or something to make an army or something like that i i i, I yeah yeah something like that yep. 
Yeah, and then uh, and then of course um, Abel has some sort of connection to that, but they didn't they don't they haven't really like talked about Abel in such a way. So yeah, unfortunate. So if we go by um, no, oh, it's a Street Fighter timeline. It's you know the first Street Fighter, then Alpha, Street Fighter two, then Street Fighter four, five, Street Fighter three. Yeah, it's Third Strike. Yeah. But but and then, then now six and then now six yes I believe that's how it roughly goes, um, okay. yeah. <laughs> but um yeah I mean how do you feel about Bison coming back though like when he's supposed to be dead right that's like the the number one like con yeah, that, that, controversy yeah, at the moment. At first I was like yeah I was like wait you're supposed to be dead and then when we will bring it up soonish his trailer oh yes was dropped on accident thank you taiwan yeah yeah and then they're just like yeah fuck it we're just gonna release it now because yeah but um it's poor it's pretty much cool but it was like wait but we already have ed right who does have the the psycho powers mm -hmm. but now we actually see someone who truly was master of the psychic powers. Yes. I mean, the psycho powers. Mm -hmm. And he's got a horse. Look at this shot, dude. He's he, he's Rao, basically. He's Rao from um, Piss and Miller Star. Yes. Yeah. Get the horse and oh, everything. So that's the thing, too, everyone. <laughs> Little uh, uh, fighting game character history. Yep. M. Bison was modeled after Raul. Raul and, and uh, oh, what was the other one from? It was like some very obscure niche anime. What was it? it was like Tokyo something. It was, this the character was a police officer. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah, one of them is Raul for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then um, later on in this video, you're gonna see. Oh, he is now looking. Or paying homage, homage to another person that portrayed uh, M. Bison, which also had the horse. Yes. And yes, in Japan, his name is Vega. <laughs> yes, yeah. There's a whole explanation about it, but we're not going to go into that. Yeah, well, that, that, and go learn it yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun history. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike Tyson. No, I'm just gonna... <laughs> but anyway. Obviously, he's got new moves. I love that grab. Yeah. He can. Psycho Crusher! It is a regular move now. Yes. He's not locked behind his damn. Re trigger, essay. yeah. Jesus Christ, that was the most stupidest thing they ever mm -hmm. did. He's got like follow ups, and he builds up like a bomb in you. Still has a knee press. Oh no, he's an Izo. So, mm. so, 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 we gotta, we gotta restart again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so go, go back again when he did his, um... Oh yeah, the drive rush? Drive rush? Yes. Holy crap, that's he's... more scary than freaking DJ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My friend. He's like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> he is pretty fast. So everyone... Ooh broke this down, really said that, hey, this is his uh, CVS uh, 2 or CVS um, run run animation. Mm, and then, not to mention, yeah, like, he's um, looking a little more slim. Like, he's not, like, yeah. crazy, like... So this is Street big... Fighter 2's version of... Um, mm -hmm. The classic yeah, costume, yeah. We have a classic yeah. costume right here. Look at him, look at him run. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Like that, that's a dad like coming to whoop his kid for doing something yep. dumb. I love that EX. Yeah, I know. Come here. He's <laughs> got those knees. 
So it looks like his psychic uh, psycho power is kind of like Ed. You know, like how Ed kind of like have a lingering um, explosion. Mm -hmm. so, so now, um, I guess with M Bison, it's like let me show you how to really use really it. use it. Yeah. yeah. I do like that. Like <laughs> drills. Mm -hmm. I just wish um, when he makes the arc and he slams back down, he still is doing Psycho Crusher and then finishing mm -hmm. it. it. It looks like it when you look at the animation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on. Let me see. So he goes zoom. So it looks like after he lands, he just drags you. But I kind of wish he spins just a little and then comes out of the mm -hmm. just a little little spin. yeah a little little more touch up yeah but like let's just just let it linger just a bit mm -hmm. yeah, look at his face dude my god he's got that long gray hair or white hair a little bit of facial hair and then scars <laughs> yep right there ish yeah all right so yeah right here ish is well if he was wearing the um, Street Fighter Two classic costume, mm -hmm. it was an it was painted a homage to a uh, Raul Julia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the actor who played uh, M Bison in the movie, the li live action classic movie. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. Now my question is, because we have M Bison, M Bison back. Mm -hmm. How scared is JP going to be right now? I know, right? It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yes. Because um, in the English side, because, again, this this trailer was in Japanese, everyone. Yes. He was saying that you called me M. Bison. I guess I'll, you know, take the name and, you know, make it as my own. Mm -hmm. And if you look into the trailer, <clears throat> he was absorbing memories because mm -hmm. what, um, what seth was doing he was actually collecting like data and such yes so guess, uh, at this point um he's gonna regain or he's gonna be a fully you know m bison like, yeah he's you know, he'll, he'll fully data. return to himself yes because it looks like he has some like amnesia or something Amnesia, or he is probably a clone, or yeah, a he... empty doll vessel mm -hmm. that has no memories of anything. Yeah. So yeah, like he, he yeah. it was like it was like he was he was being uploaded the the memory files and then just stopped. Like mm -hmm. someone pulled the plug too mm -hmm. too quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you remember where the cutscene was, or was it here at all? Like, was it a different uh, trailer? Remember? I think he was. I think is it here? I don't know. Uh, let's try and see. I think close to the beginning because he was it in the beginning himself. Did. Like it's just a horse, and then he takes a picture for some reason, and then um. Yeah, he just does that stuff. Let me see if let me see if it's a different trailer. It might be the other trailer with Terry and um. Oh, you're probably right. Um. Oh no, you know what? I think it, what it was. Uh. Let me see. I think it's on the Street Fighter Twitter account. Oh, uh, not that one. This one. Is this this? No, I think it's just the same exact thing, but in English. So we're just going to just watch it from Twitter. Yeah. I think it is this one. There's the yeah, hat. This one. Yep. Yeah. I don't want to know why it's only on Twitter. Yeah, it's a bunch of scientists. Yeah, see, here you go. Here you go. Right there. So yeah, there you go. There's a face, so that might be Steph. Yeah, oh, there's a face right there. You're right. Right there, yeah. So he pretty much said download complete. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, download complete. And then if you look closely, um, when he was absorbing, there was like cutscenes and mm -hmm. screenshots of past video games. games yes. Yes. I was about to bring that so, up too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. You you can tell, yeah, this empty vessel is now becoming a, yeah. true, a full M Bison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, maybe it's not the same M Bison that we saw in Street Fighter V, but we're gaining an M Bison, no less, in, in, in Street Fighter Six. So, I mean, does that mean Nash's sacrifice was in vain? We don't know because we got to see what the story is all about with this with this M Bison, and if they somehow incorporate the whole vessel thing, then that's a pretty genius way to have an excuse to bring back um, a dead character. You know what I mean? Because you know it's a fighting game character. People had invested in those characters for, only for them to die. It's like yeah, you know, yeah, that's you know, I can definitely see why pe people with uh, who have the you know the end bison knowledge and end bison mains would be really really happy because yeah obviously that's the character they go to and compete with you know uh i mean you know and then you know there's that thing about fighting games right now it's like oh yeah you know dead characters mean nothing right you know right now since by and bison's coming back and uh what's his face uh geese is still around somehow or you know so that means, does that mean Heihachi will come back somehow? I don't know. I don't know. They can pull off the whole parallel universe thing. That's like a cheap cop out, but I don't know. It is an excuse. But yeah, um, this also does theorize, though. That's how uh, Terry and Mai come into the thing. Because um, you have to remember that you know, there's only there's only four characters per DLC season because they take the time to make the story for these characters with the world tour stuff, including in Bison and Elena, of course, right? That's why there's only four characters because you know they need more time. Um, so I imagine there's got to be one for both um, Terry and Mai, you know. So that means um, they have to be part of the world, right? How do they enter the world? Maybe this, right? Because it's a bunch of like past fighting games, and maybe that's how you know he brings in at least Terry and um, Mai because he ripped some sort of hole doing this or something. I don't know, you know. And that was kind of theorized by uh, Brian F. So I wanted to at least credit him for that idea anyway. You know, that's how maybe maybe um, Terry and Mai come into the fray. Whereas, yeah, maybe, maybe they did live in the this world at some point i don't know you know <laughs> who knows but either way um and bison is coming terry is coming as well as my and on top of that we have elena coming too so um quite quite the quite the choices right um yep. still no alex for me still no ingrid for zava you know <laughs> So we have to wait for another year for that possibility to be even be a thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. What what do you think of this whole, the the picks, the choices overall? Despite, like, looking at it, man. Oops. Probably if you stop coming, um, SNK are finally mending their, uh, you know, they're past beef with each other. <laughs> yeah, not to mention um, uh, Fatal Fury, you know, the game Fatal Fury is coming out next year. So that is a way to help promote the game. And uh, does that mean, if that is the case, Street Fighter characters will make it into um, Fatal Fury to sort of like equalize the deal almost? You know? So... If that is the thing, who will make it into a, a Fatal Fury as the Street Fighter guest characters, you know? If at that, if, if it's going to be Street Fighter characters, maybe they could throw in some like Capcom characters. I don't know. That could be a, that could be a thing. But it's just funny because it's Terry and Mai instead of like, you know, Kyo. Because Kyo is kind of like supposed to be like yeah. the poster boy for King of Fighters. But this is a Fatal Fury, so to be fair, to be fair, because Terry is yeah, the main character. Fair, yeah, it's a, it's a different, um, not a different uh, iteration, but you know, more people will nowadays. So let's just read Terry. Yes. For for the representation. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, especially with like Smash and all that stuff. Mm. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, and again, this is supposed to be Fatal Fury, not so much King of Fighters. So, I mean, but they take place in the same universe, to be fair. But yeah, it's more specific to Fatal Fury than anything. Uh, but yeah, you know, um, Kill hasn't really seen too much guest character limelight in comparison to Terry, which is kind of funny. But uh, I mean, if you think about it, man, Terry's kind of a cool character. Let's be real here. <laughs> you know? And uh, Mai, though, of course, it's not just one, but two characters, right? That's that's crazy. That's crazy. We got Mai and Terry coming in. Of course, you know, Mai is like the iconic, like, female character from the SK side of things, you know? Um, so they have, or she has a rivalry with, um, Chun-Li and especially in CVS. And speaking of that, does that mean that there is a possibility of a CVS three, like an actual fully fledged CVS three sometime in the future, you know, that could be really cool. Especially if, uh, uh hmm? yeah, bringing up uh, CVS three, I think it it calls that it, it's been enough time for a new versus game. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for, for Capcom versus uh, Capcom game. To, yeah to try again. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's not like they're dealing with uh, Marvel, so I'm pretty sure SNK will be like very open arms about it. So really, it's just a matter of like, yeah, how can they? Put it all together and stuff like that the time and scheduling and stuff like that because i'm sure they're both busy with their own games you know because uh fatal fury is coming up um not to mention they still have kof 15 to you know make sure it runs and then um capcom side of course they're running uh street fighter 6 you know you got their own little hustle too but yeah for now pretty big w for the street fighter care uh street fighter fans and uh, not only that, but Fatal Fury, because Fatal Fury is also coming up and it's continuing to be celebrated and such like that. But no one ever would. I, I'm pretty sure no one actually thought Terry and, and Mai were going to be in the same roster, you know, in the same season at that. But also on top of that, M. Bison and Elena. Damn, man. Shit. But hey, she, the third strike character. I can only hope that's Alex makes it in there. Oh man, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> and uh, same with Makoto. Makoto is really cool. I think she's the, she deserves a spot. Um, I do wonder though, are they gonna do more guest characters, or is just is this just the, uh, just Terry and Mai? You know, that's also another question. Are they gonna do more? Uh, SNK stuff like are they gonna bring in Yori? Right, that was like the highly rumored character that was gonna come into Street Fighter Five, but it wasn't. You know, it wasn't that wasn't the time. But instead, we did get Rival School's character uh, Akira, so that was pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of questions for sure. A lot of questions, but we did definitely have um something to to celebrate about for sure. For sure. Alrighty. Next up, we do have um. Oh, let me see. I think there was some art I wanted to uh, show, featuring uh, <laughs> yes, with um hungry clicker. This is this is a North the Fist and North Star reference. Ryu is Ryu is looking at these like big ass horse tracks. <laughs> that's a that's a Fist and North Star <laughs> reference. Uh, it's that's funny. That's really funny. And then obviously someone dropped the gif of Rao. He, he's so cool. Rao is really cool. One of the most badass uh, characters in um, Okto. For sure. Um, Alright. So... Oh yeah. Still on, top, on the topic of... Why is it not letting me click? But anyway. I'll just... Uh, copy and paste it why won't you do it? <laughs> yeah exactly 
Okay. So there was a situation though with Bison because he is coming out pretty soon. And in fact, he is coming out June 26, which is about the same time as uh, this year's CEO, right? Fighting, big fighting game tournament, as well as Evo and Combo Breaker, right? They're sort of the big three. And um, J. Bailey first said, you know what? This is getting exhausted as a TO. <laughs> Um, and then next week he says, I don't think I'm gonna have a vote like, uh, Common Breaker did with Akuma and put my foot down. Whatever patch comes out with Bison, we will have, uh, downloaded right before CEO, but not allow him to be used in the tournament since the event isn't recognized by, uh, Capcom Pro Tour this year. Let me rest. So that's the tweet. So, uh, sadly, he will not be legal at uh, CEO, so we don't get to see him in action with the competitors and stuff I mean, like that. I mean, we'll probably see him, like, on people just playing for fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, casual, casual setups. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. People will play him regardless, right? Mm -hmm. but, not, but not for the actual, like, tournament, obviously. But, you know, there's always the, the streamers, right? Y'all you, uh, follow, right? You got your fighting game streamers, you, you know, people follow. They'll play him, you know? They'll play him for sure. And, um... I, I was... Oh, god damn it, that drive rush is still... So funny. And ridiculous. But anyway. Yeah. Um... Is I it? I can't find that uh, tweet anymore. Oh, again, it's in Bison um, running up. Mm -hmm. And someone put like... Don't worry, my dog don't bite. The dog. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, people were like... Um, you know, react to this. See if you can see if you can uh, hit a button or something, or react to the, that drive rush or whatever. So, I actually like this. The I forgot to I forgot to talk about it, but I like this um super art or whatever you call it, the level two, because it it, it, it uh, references Street Fighter Four with this ultra uh, ultra combo. I think it was called with the stomp and everything. What was it? Yep. It was just right there, too. Not the knee. Let me see. Uh, it should be coming up. God, he's got too many combos, man. Shit. <laughs> oh, there you go. I like I like the, the, the hammer fist. It's pretty cool. There you go. He, like, grabs him, stabs him, and... Pops him with the cycle power. Yeah. Bison actually looks really good in his uh, classic costume. I'm not going to lie. Yep. Which can't say for real. Because, again, he looks fucking weird. He looks really weird without the beard and everything. Yeah. He's meant to have the beard in, in Street Fighter 6. That's for sure. They should have at least give him some like scruff or something. I don't know, but he's pretty clean shaven. All right, so I think that's it for sure. Oh yeah, there's some concept art with M Bison. Pretty cool, you know. I like that. I like the asymmetry, right? With the uh. The gear he has on, the shin guard, the one shin guard, and then the other arm is like wrapped. Like the yeah. way he looks like this, he looks like a Fallout character. He kind of does, yeah. Always, <laughs> he was he was bored in the wasteland, mm -hmm. molded by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, molded by it. Yeah, yeah. He looks pretty sick. That's all I can say. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming soon too. Like I, I didn't even. Yeah, like I, I'm, I keep forgetting this is June already. Like, right, damn. We just, we just got Akuma. You know, I felt like, like Jesus. Same energy with Dark Siders. Yeah, he kind of looks like a Dark Siders character. <laughs> oh, there it is. There's the, uh, the art right there. With uh, live action and Bison. So, 
I wonder how the cutscenes are gonna go with M. Bison though, because like, well, same with Akuma and uh, with the World Tour stuff. Like, are you gonna talk to him on the smartphone? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know how that works with Akuma. I haven't seen that at all. So you he's gonna child. What yeah. is that in your hand? <laughs> yeah, I know. Smartphone. What is smart? Food? What's so smart about that phone? <laughs> Oh yeah, and I forget to comment. Um, his Japanese voice actor is different. There's no more uh, Wakamoto, sadly. You know the guy who voices Cell and all that stuff, and Johnny. He's gone. He's not Vice. He's not in Vice anymore. So I think, I mean, be, to me, because he has a different voice in Japanese, maybe he is a different in Bison, like technically, like a different body. It does raise up that theory a little more because it is a different voice so which usually kind of significant signif uh signifies that it's a different person you know usually unless you know oh yeah i know that voice actor passed away or something but like um it's in this case though it kind of brings up the the theory right like it's not the same exact in bison but something similar someone similar but I like this voice actor. I think he, um, uh, I forget his name. Uh, what was it? It's like Tight Ten. Wait, it's like, I think it's Tight uh, Ten. Yeah, there you go. This guy, Kusunoki. He actually, it's funny enough, he dubs. He's he's like the official dub artist. For Vin Diesel and uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It's so funny. And other roles he's had. He did uh, Galaxy Optimus Prime. In Transformers Cybertron. Way back when. Um, oh, he's Nail in Dragon Ball Z Kai. That's interesting. Darken in Black. Um, he voiced Lebanon. Oh, in One Piece, he's a Rouge. Okay, okay. He's like that big dude with the angel wings. Okay. That's cool. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, he also voices another, like, side character, which is, uh, Rolling Logan. Okay. Um. Let me see. Oh, okay. He voiced um, Hihachi in the, the the Netflix anime. Okay. You know, with the triangle shadows and everything. Remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, he's Lu Su in Dynasty Warriors 9, at least. Uh, Ganondorf in Hario Warriors. Oh, it's funny. He voices Soldier Seventy Six in Japanese. Yeah, he's got he's got a lot. He's he definitely has a lot for sure. So they picked a a good voice actor for sure. He's he, he I think he's a good a great um new voice for M Bison. I I like I like his uh current delivery. My God, look at Jerry being super flexible. That's so funny. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Try and catch me, motherfucker. Boom. <laughs> right there. <laughs> next like bit. Yep. Mm hmm Exactly. Yep. All right, cool. There's a lot to say about M. Bison, for sure. And then, just when you think you were done with fighting games, nope, we got still another character to talk about. At least two, anyway. With um, B. Jenny. Or B. Jenny. For Fatal Fury. She'd been revealed, man, but... But damn, she got, got older looking. Look at her. So let's check out the trailer. I think this is in English, so yeah. Get to hear the English voice first. Damn.
Got that counter with the butt. <laughs> I love that. I love the. Uh, I love that thing. Come hit me. Smack. Mm, yep. Yeah, look at her go. God damn. God damn. It's kind of not really sad, but uh, a good parallel of what art style works better than the other. Mm hmm. Yeah. Fighto Fare. Wolf of the city. Fatal Furry. <laughs> <laughs> fat Al. <laughs> yeah, fat, 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 fat Al. Fat Al. <laughs> it's like, why Why are you putting a space between that? It's like, I don't fucking know. It's like Fat Albert. <laughs> uh, man, wishlist now. <laughs> I think that's like the new thing, right? You wishlist things on Steam. That they want you to do. Um, yeah, that's about it. And then, <laughs> I like the and comment. If we look at the, uh, the, um, whatchamacallit, the thing, uh, the platforms that this, uh, mm -hmm. game is coming out of, it's, uh, yes. PS5, PS, PS4 is hanging in there. Hanging in there, yes. Slowly. Yes. The Xbox series, mm -hmm. Steam, and <sighs> Epic Games. Epic Games, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least they're everywhere, though. Oh, for the most part, that's yeah, good. They got. Sorry, sorry, kid. I got. I got to see what's on the Fortnite, uh, uh, shop. Oh, the. Sh <laughs> it's Dragon Ball Z. Oh, is it okay? I like the comments now. Like right. the new bank account. Yeah, I, the the update for YouTube allows to have the comments on the side now, so I can actually like see the comments and not like go down and you know miss out on the video, right? I can just scroll down to the comments and watch the video at the same time. That's kind of neat. Anyway, yeah. one comment said they made kind a... Kind of like a, a chat. Like yeah, chat. Like check, it's a chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes they're sense. Learning. Yeah, they're learning. I like the, com the first comment. that says, they made them bigger. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it's kind of true. She, 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 she got a glow up a, a bit, you know? Um... She definitely looks older here in Fatal Fury versus in KOF 15. She looks like more like younger, uh, a little more anime. Whereas this is one, this one is a little more on the realism side, but here it looks more older and mature looking and bigger in some areas. <laughs> yeah. What I will say though, as a negative comment is that with the half tone being pretty extreme, there's supposed to be cannonballs following her, but you can hardly see that. It's like kind of blended in with the with the dots. So I'm wondering if they can, they can like brighten up the cannonballs a bit or like, I don't know. Do something with that. Like, I didn't even realize until I like looked at the trailer again that there were supposed to be cannonballs following her because she you knows she's a pirate. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see. It's hard to see, but oh, fuck! I wish they made they had this type of um art style for NPC Infinite. If only, right? If only, but but if no. Only, but, but 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 we are uh, Infinite's getting a second life thanks to the um the modern combined efforts of yeah the modern, the modern. Max. Like, yes, thank God it looks so much better. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, really, really unfortunate that, you know, it's something, it, it's it definitely, right. it's definitely something, but it's very unfortunate that, you know, we had the situation with fucking the MCU and Disney or like, we gotta make it look like the movie. We gotta be, make it like the, the MCU. So the, uh, what do you call the, the okay, roster and again, the, the infamous, the infamous freaking um, line that ticked the tick off 
everybody functions functions oh my gosh that that's a very unfortunate yeah, yeah. i'm pretty sure roses did not want to say it but yeah, like like yeah. I, I i yeah he didn't want to say it but they they needed someone to be thrown under the bus yes for sure the did. fall guy yeah mm -hmm. it, no no one won in that situation for you for, uh, for sure but for here looks like the uh, snk fans are winning for sure with more of this these trailers you know um there is one more character and, um did, go ahead did we uh get like a final roster count for which one for fatal for um yeah for fatal of fui but fat al fat al um yeah. no we we are still going so Kind of want to watch I, it in I Japanese. Pick at least, at least in the twenties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I that. twenty four is like a pretty healthy number too. Yeah, hmm. I would say twenty five. You're put no, uh, twenty eight. You're pushing it, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Hold on, let me just fast okay. forward here. <laughs> I'm sorry, that the that three beats I thought we we're fucking gonna watch Fraser. Oh the ba -dip -ba -dip, yeah the ba -dip -ba -dip, yeah. Right. I'm like I'm like Did I turn on Fraser? Yeah, ba -dip -ba -dip, yeah, 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 right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh the the ba the plucking bass, yeah. Ba -dip -ba -dip -ba -dip -ba -dip, yeah. But I love this jazz. Mm-hmm beat for her yes like in my hit cannon it's her crew playing playing her mm -hmm. yeah and if they miss a beat or they're off tune she just they say wait hold on gays you mm -hmm. you 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 over there uh-huh you screwed us up The smear, smear effect looks really good. Mm. For um, for a uh, her dress. Yeah. Yeah. So. I wonder about modder when this game comes out. It's gonna kind of like make her look like Boa Hancock. Oh man, that's <laughs> like it's gonna be really like on the nose. Mm hmm Very on par. Like, like wait, wait a minute, is this is this official? Like, is this, is she in the game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or she... have her with the colors of mm -hmm. um, Boa Hancock. Yeah, like color scheme. Yeah, you're right. She does actually have like pretty much the checkbox, right? The dress is like that. She got she got the the really high cut dress, long hair, big um big booba, you know. <laughs> the bubas. The bub the bubba, yeah. And then and, and lo and behold, she is a pirate. She is a, <laughs> what is she, she's a pirate. <laughs> she kicks a lot. There you go. You know, she got all the tick boxes off pretty much. She's just missing. Well, she kind of does the kiss, so she could just yeah, you know say it's the kiss pistol she got yeah no she got the hearts too it's so much it's it's so funny of how similar she is right to boa or boa being similar to um b jenny or you know maybe you know b jenny was the inspiration for boa yeah exactly right like it could that could be a possibility you know my god <laughs> jesus <laughs> But Jesus. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. We need to check these uh these um inflatable uh, tires to make sure they're uh <laughs> right. they're regulated. Yeah, regulated. <laughs> bounce, bounce, bounce. Mm -hmm. yeah, they are. <laughs> it's like bounce, bounce. All right. They are. <laughs> they are. All right, you can go now. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I gotta do one more check. <laughs> that means... Wait, wait, wait! We gotta, we gotta check the the, the um if it's uh what's it called? Um, if it's insured. <laughs> no. 
Yep. <laughs> like he just runs into it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, so man. Don't mind him. He's an idiot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, next one is a uh, Vox Reaper, which is a pretty interesting name. Ooh. <laughs> right. I think he's a new character, but he, I think he's also in relation of an older of a veteran character. Just what I heard anyway. Mm. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then they had to cut away. Oh, yeah, he puts on a mask. Smelly finger. <laughs> Smelly finger. <laughs> Smell instead my of burning, instead instead of bur- of burning finger or or god the finger, it's smelly finger. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> yep. So um not much to say. I mean he kind of reminds me I forget which character. I can't put my finger on it, but he definitely looks looks similar to somebody. But he has a broken mask. It's supposed to be a reference to an older uh Fatal Fury character, I think, but I'm not too uh, um, knowledgeable or deep on the uh, the Fatal Fury lore, so that's pretty much all I can say. Other than, um, yeah, I mean, he's got he's got the purple stuff, you know. Uh, design looks pretty pretty uh, pretty cool. I'm trying to see, if I can get a good. He's supposed to be. Um... Like, re- uh, related to a character named Grant. That's why his um. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Represent. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Box Reaper. Uh, Grant is a. Uh... Well, I'm trying to see like if he's old or new or. Okay, so he's a he is a uh. Yeah, there's Grant right there. He, he's a baby. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wood. <laughs> yeah, he's stays on though. Yeah, sub boss. <laughs> yeah, sub boss and Mark of the Wolves. Okay, that make, that that kind of explains his like stature. Like he looks like a, yeah, he kind of looks like a boss character. And yeah, there you go. Um, okay, that's kind of cool. So he's uh like a student or some something, right? Uh, let me see. Uh Kane or Kine. Final boss for Michael the Wolves. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Brother in law for Reese Howard. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Everybody related to the Howards. Somehow, right? All right, I see. How are you? It's like, how are you related to the to the Howard? I was Mr. Howard's cousin's brother, former roommate. Former, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Got love space balls. Okay, yeah. So basically, yeah, Grant is his master, and he has his mask and stuff like that. So, all right, cool. He did a um. A, uh, a Sith Star Wars mm-hmm. thing. He killed his master to gain power. Yeah. Oh, okay, so he is a brand new character. Got it. Okay, so because it, it says he will debut in City of the Wolves. So there you go. Alrighty. We need. Uh, yeah, be Jenny. Definitely gonna glow up. And we have a brand new character coming in. Right. So we got two characters revealed thus far. Alrighty. Um. Oh yeah. 
a lot of people were commenting on the picture right here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. There you go. Smell it. <laughs> Smell it. Yeah, even Justin Wong was like, this is this is too good. You know. Bend and snap. <laughs> the whole new meaning to bend and snap. Yep. Yeah. And uh speaking of Justin, and speaking of Waffle House, right? <laughs> I don't know why he has that face. <laughs> I don't know. He has such a deadpan face. Like, why am I here? It's like, sad. Is it kind of sad or deadpan? It's kind of funny. <laughs> Tekken A DLC stage. Yup. Waffle House. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. I thought it was pretty funny. Anyway. And then, speaking of uh, faces, right? I had to throw this in here. I forgot to talk about it when Slayer was out. But uh, this is Slayer's reaction when he gets hit by, uh, what is it, Faust's um, super with the wheelchair. We, 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 like, when he hits um, someone's yeah. shin. This is his face. <laughs> and Sharon's just like, Sir, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, are you okay? And he's like, do I look okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything's dandy. Mm -hmm, everything's dandy. <laughs> I love the vein he has on the side of his head <laughs> and the raised eyebrow. <laughs> oh, man. It's funny. I'm fine. I'm really fine. I'm really I'm fine. A, <laughs> I'm a thousand plus year old vampire. I'm fucking fine. Uh, what, what what was it? Um, oh, okay. Lamau, he thinks he's this is going to hurt me. <laughs> Eternal screaming. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Pretty much. That pretty much sums up the point. For her, she's like, how, how does that not hurt you? It was like, it's fine. <laughs> I'm trying. So you can to... see him like actually like gr gritting his teeth onto his pipe. Like, yeah, the pipe. Mm -hmm. it's yep. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Go away. <laughs> I love how he's like pointing down too. So like out of context, yeah. it looks pretty like, but like that's like all the more uh, hilarious. <laughs> Want to see my dog? <laughs> dog. <laughs> Want to see my Danny? <laughs> it's like you name your you name your bleep <laughs> Dandy. No, no. And he picks it up. He's like a little dog. Dandy. <laughs> like, uh huh. Sure. <laughs> Oh, uh, you gotta love Slayer. Apparently, he's like really crazy good right now because he does a lot of damage. Apparently, so I can't wait to see him at like CEO or something for uh, for Strive. All right, so that's it for that. Let's try to speed through the Summer Game Fest thing in Frontline News. So let's do this. Uh, where was it? Where was it? The fuck. I can't find it on the thing. That's weird. <laughs> All right, fine. I have to bring it. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I was going on. I don't know what's going on with the mobile Discord, but we got this one. There we go. Jeez. Anyways, so this the, that one show with uh, Jeff Keighley happened, and um, I wanted to bring this up because there's apparently a leak on the information of how much it costs to actually have a showing at Summer Game Fest. So like, if you want to if you want to show your game for like a minute, you have to pay two hundred fifty k. That's, yeah, that's that's quite a lot. <laughs> Two that's minutes. That's quite a lot, but but mm -hmm. when you think of it as a whole, yeah, this is cheap compared to like, oh, I'm gonna do a thirty second ad at the Super Bowl. True. Yes, because you have to look at it as a company. You, you know, obviously for individuals, like this sounds a lot, like a lot. I'm pretty sure that's kind of like a drop in a bucket for like a number of companies. You know? Yeah, obviously, like two and a half minutes. 
550k man that's a lot you know but you got to see how much money like genshin makes for example or hoyleverse makes for example like that's like kind of kind of nothing you know um but it says here an update um Jeff provides free slots for some uh, smaller games and studios for those who are worried about like the indie games and stuff like that. You know, people who want who are just starting out and such. Um, obviously, you gotta be uh, you know, I'm, there, I'm sure there's some like favoritism at that, but yeah. you know, that's kind of that's that's kind of business, right? Not excusing it, but that's just kind of how it goes, you know. And I'm I'm. I, I I kind of been scouring the um the forum the Twitters <laughs> mm -hmm. to see if anyone like took a picture of inside the um the event and if there was a giant ass screen that says wrap it up. Mm -hmm. So far nothing. So I'm like, mm, did 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 uh Mr. Keely uh, learn not to put that damn thing? Cause, right. What was it? A, a week ago he posted like. Uh, what what changes would you like to see at the show? And then a lot of people were putting, get rid of this. Do mm -hmm. not show this damn thing. Yeah. There is a parenthesis saying, though it appears massive companies, uh, though it appears, excuse me, massive companies and famous devs with big games don't pay these prices. So, um, you know, maybe they get a deal. Uh, discount you know obviously or you know something right yeah, obviously again favoritism you know so yeah but i mean that seems like business you know especially if you're trying to go for like the super bowl and stuff like that Oof, yeah good luck you know i might i imagine it's like close to like million a million dollars or something you know but um anyway that's kind of like uh, not as important as the games announced and such like that and how the show went. I didn't get to see it myself. Um, I was getting ready for work, so I didn't like quite catch it. I only caught like the end of it. Um, he did mention about like uh, indie teams. Um, this year's games it acknowledged the uh the studio closures right including tangle and stuff like that yes that's a you know obviously a terrible situation but after that lego horizon was announced for a lot of the platforms and even including switch so does that mark the first sort of playstation ip to be on the switch or nintendo console does that count you know right yep yeah. Uh, no more room in Hell Two, featuring permadeath and eight-player co-op. Um, uh, Harry Potter Quidditch Champions. Cuff bust. It's funny how they they named it as Harry Potter and not the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. These. Hmm. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like. Like, hmm, they really trying to, uh, you know, reel in uh, fans of the Wizarding World. Yeah. Into Harry Potter for just saying Harry Potter. Mm hmm. Cuff Bus. There's more. Cuff Bus looks fun. Hmm. Oh, okay. Because I, I can see it. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, because you didn't. Um, couldn't watch it. Basically, this is a um, escape out of prison. About eight players, I believe. Oh, and, you know, do whatever you can to escape. So it's pretty much Shawshank Redemption if it was a a video um, a game, cute, a, a cute, cute video cute game. Video. Okay. Okay, that's, that's that sounds pretty cool. And it's like, yeah, you can work together with the other seven people, or you can just screw you. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> troll them. Like yeah. There's outlaws for Star War Star Wars, which I personally don't care about too much, but I don't I don't care about it yeah. as much. But the artist is I fo I follow. Let's just say there's a certain character that they 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 
they lusting over. Oh, okay. It's not it's not this girl. Mm-hmm. It's not this character main character. It's a droid. Mm, mm-hmm. I had a feeling it would be the the non human. <laughs> yeah. Never. Okay. Civilization seven. Coming in uh next year. Me. Yeah. Sid Meier's of Civilization. I love my, I love my um, RTS. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a very underappreciated genre right now, I feel, because a lot of people are like, or a lot of companies are trying to get in on the whole live service FPSs or shooters, you know? That type of stuff. Meanwhile, like, RTSs are kind of just like being left in the dust right now. Uh, we got Black Myth Kong coming out for uh, in August. That's like a. It's been it's been it's been uh, anticipated for sure. Um, before we go further though, I did want to mention about Wukong. It's it's more not funny, but more um like fuck. I knew this was gonna happen. When yeah. So it's, really, mm-hmm. when they showed like, hey, here's a collector's edition. Right then, there, my fucking phone yes. rang, and guess who it was? It was my fucking boyfriend going like, "If you love me," I was like, "Nope, hang up." Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't love you. <laughs> oh man. Well, anyway, it says according to Wario sixty four. Anyway, uh, physical editions will be will yeah will be an activation code in a box no disc due to game science's first time releasing globally in limitations and resources so kind of unfortunate that you know you know you don't get to have that like that physical experience um it is what it is i guess for those uh who are like big physical edition heads right uh, kind of unfortunate, you know, you don't get to have, like, that disc, you know. But, hey, I mean, you still get... Uh, wait, so... Are any of this stuff... Uh, oh, okay, so, I guess that's... Um, physical, right? Right? Is that right? Oh, the statue is, is just a statue, at least. <laughs> Warranty certificate stamps and postcard um color print on silk scroll okay you get quite a bit of stuff um but yes you do get uh there is a digital deluxe edition obviously it is like different you get a weapon right off the bat along with um the folk opera equipment and stuff like that typical um you know Deluxe edition stuff. Uh, there is metaphor from the same people who work on uh, Persona, Persona games. Same team, I think. So obviously it has that you know that that style to it, right? Especially with their monsters. Batman Arkham Shadow, which is a VR game. Of course, we talked about Street Fighter Six's uh, Year Two DLC, right? We just talked about that. Tears of Metal. Sparking Zero coming out October. So yeah, we have the uh the giant characters, right? And of course, right, yeah, pre-order bonus. If you pre-order now, you get six uh characters early already. Uh although technically two if you want uh, the way depending on how you look at things. And then uh, a mystery playable character, I guess, yet to be revealed till later on. Um, it's like Jojo's the character. Yeah, right. A guest character. Uh, Delta Force Hawk Ops. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. This is supposed to be based off the movie Black Hawk Down. So that's kind of random. And then we just talked about that. Fatal Fury, Seed of the Wolves. They got the mini games in there. Kind of like uh, Mortal Kombat. So, you know, um, Hester Mike. Bloomhouse games. 
they like kind of sped through these, I guess. Rave Seasons. Um, Crystal Theater of Idols. Yeah, because Bloomhouse usually makes movies. Yep. And now they're starting to make, uh, or wanting to start get into the gaming industry. So that's interesting. The Power Rangers game, which is like going back in time, essentially. Very retro-esque. You know, you got these beat em up type of stuff. You got these like segments. It kind of reminds me of like uh, uh, Battle Toads, you know? Um, Very old uh, game. Yeah, of course, you got the Megazord, right? Of course. Yeah, it's called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Rita's Rewind. So they're kind of playing around with that nostalgia factor. Deer and Boy. So a very like artistic game, you know, you know, you know, like that. That uh, it's that it's that sort of like indie game, very very uh, much on the artistic side and uh, thematic, right? Very thematic. Uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance two. There's screenshots right there. Uh, slow to head. Coming out November 8th of this year. Killer Bean. So this is another game that's like kind of like a how do you how do you what's what's the term for it? Um a potential hidden gem, let's just put it that way. Because um Killer Bean is from an an old anime series on YouTube made by a person who uh wor helped work on the matrix movies i think yeah. along he and his wife um put quite a bit of money into this series and um you know do it for the love basically it's like a very big passion project kind of and um yeah if you if you like look at uh if you if any of you have seen the series you already know like how rambunctious the action is, but it's just like cool in a very different way, you know? It's got that it's got that unique flavor of cool. Even though yes, the game or the thing is just called Killer Bean, you know? As strange as it may look on the exterior side of things. But it looks like you can do like all kinds of stuff besides just shooting people, so it's pretty neat. Um I did talk about it like early on or not early on, but, like way back when in an in older uh, episode and um, yeah. uh, it's it's crazy it's like it was like already coming along pretty good and um, it and I think this game is ma being made by like one dude or very few people or something that's a, that's the story behind it so I look forward to it I will like to play it um, in the summer since that's coming uh, that's when it's coming out for early access anyway so I like to check it out. Uh, Kyron. I think that's how you pronounce the name. Forgive me. Uh, next one is Wander Stop. Uh, from the creator of Stanley Parable. First Descendant. Outer Sloth. Rogue Eclipse and uh, Project Dosa. So we're like seeing all the like the indie stuff, I'm guessing. Among Us series. Apparently coming soon. Uh of course it's gonna have Pan Oswald in there. <laughs> uh Ashley Johnson. Elijah Wood. Uh Phil Lamar. Phil Lamar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wayne Knight. I believe Wayne Knight is the guy who played the fat dude with the glasses from um, Jurassic Park, right? And then um, the also uh, also basically like this similar character in um, the first Space Jam, if you remember him. I think his name was like Stanley or something in the in the movie, but 
Um, yeah. And then, like, um, we have Sonic, uh, Sh Sonic Shadow Generations, which, funny enough, Sonic, yeah, um, which, funny enough, it got the most, like, audience reaction, apparently. And then Jeff was just like, all right, cool, Sonic, all right, let's move on. <laughs> you know, the, in, in that oh. Jeff, Jeff Keighley fashion. Jeff Keighley. Oh, speaking of like Jeff Keighley fashion, a lot of Kingdom Hearts uh, people were like happy when he said um, it was like Kingdom of something, but he was like Kingdom, and everyone was like, <gasps> and then he said the the full title. And all the Kingdom Hearts fan, including my friend who's a diehard, they were like, <gasps> yeah. I was like, what's wrong? He baited me. I was like, no, you did that to yourself. Oh, the, the the kingdom come of uh, come deliverance or something like that. Is that what? The... Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I figured. Yeah. So he was like kingdom, like like to wake up people, which I guess it worked. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the dude. So uh, yeah. I was ahead. like, you, you did this to yourself. Like, you, you yeah. got your hopes up really high. So <laughs> your fault. Mm -hmm. Okay, so apparently with the digital deluxe edition, they're giving you three days early access. Oh, God, God damn it. <laughs> of course, more stuff along with it. You get skill points right off the bat. Extra uh, music. Digital art book. And this skin. I'm not too sure who that is. I have to look into that. He might be from the comics or something. I'm not too sure. Turios. Hmm. Sound like sound like Cheerios or something. <laughs> now I kind of want some Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> anyway, um, but I roll my eyes on the three day. I already eat hmm? um, honeycombs. Oh yeah, that's that's a isn't that like another cereal that like ruins the roof of your mouth or something? Or am I thinking uh? Captain yeah, why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weak. Right. <laughs> And same with the what was it the Captain Crunch like the regular Captain Crunch the yellow one yeah the the yellow one I fucking hate the yellow one yeah give me peanut butter crunch at least at least the blood would taste better <laughs> than <the> peanut butter <laughs> god damn it <laughs> um Dune Awakening after that Which, um for those um about the Dune game this is an alternate universe mm, it does okay. not take place during uh, or it does not share any i mean it shares some beats but not a full share of oh, like, the movie yeah 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 are, are portraying so mm -hmm. it's a separate it. it's a separate thing okay okay yeah it's its own um it's its own thing yeah own own re uh, own telling yes of the dune world yeah mm -hmm. dune open world survival mmo okay that sounds pretty cool battle aces rts for everyone quote unquote I mean, just judging so, from uh, this, Battle East is, is pretty much um, if you love uh, uh Starcraft, mm. it's like that, but easier. Okay. Because they they want everyone to you know, you know enjoy a RTS. I see. Starcraft on base on surface level looks fun, but there's like so much uh, micromanaging you have mm -hmm. to do in that game. Yes. Yeah. The finals, uh, season three. Sam Lake, uh, with Alan Wake. So, oh, yeah. Alan Wake is going to have a Alan Wake two. It's going to have a physical yeah release. Hmm. Okay. So it's a win for those that love some physical copies of their games. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Night Springs. Uh. Okay. So it's out now. So Night Springs is just a spoof of um, the Twilight Zone. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wow, okay. I see. That looks like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Keanu or um, a young, younger-looking uh, Nicolas Cage. Yeah, yeah. You can kind of say that. Um, a New World Eternum. 
the Amazon Prime MMO, I believe. Oh, is it? Okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's, Amazon. yeah. You're right. Amazon Gamies. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess. That's the Capcom game that was shown, like, previously somewhere. Um, more stuff. And that is coming out, uh, pretty soon, actually. July, July, uh, 19. Um, uh, technically the first day of Evo. Oh, sh is it? I thought it was, like, right at the end. Yep. Oh, okay. No, Evo is, um, 19th to the... 20 21st oh okay yeah okay that, that'll okay be, that'll be something yeah say like, god damn it <laughs> i want to play kunitsu <laughs> but um hyper light breaker after that um okay so apparently there's gonna be a, a skate game that's in pre pre alpha right now i haven't heard that name in a long time right that that genre like jesus they're coming back with a game. Like people still play these type of games. Like the only skate game I ever like truly play from you know from childhood is um, the Tony Hawk series. Mm -hmm. And for, unfortunately, they fucked up um, Tony Hawk Five for that. And then uh, Power World, they got new region, I guess, with the Sakurajima update. This game is so random, like, I, I don't know what I'm looking at at times, you know? Yeah, update's coming pretty soon. Uh, end of June. Valorant console beta. So it's coming to consoles now. Or soon, at least. Or at least for... Okay, yeah, PS5 and Xbox. Oh, yeah, so one of the big ones for me. Monster Hunter Wilds. Right? Looks pretty good. Right? Looks pretty good. And uh, there's a talk about um, being able to have two weapons, two kinds of weapons, instead of one. Very much breaking the tradition. So, I don't know. I mean, what, what do you what do you make of that as a veteran Monster Hunter player? Not going to matter to me because everyone's going to be like, okay, all right, change your weapon. Why do you have another great sword? <laughs> Why don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it's like that. Like, can you have two of the same kinds of weapons? So, can I have, like, um, uh, let, let's just say, like, hypo hypothetically speaking, like, um, uh, what was it? Dual blades with status, mm -hmm. and then dual blades just for damage, right? You know? Or uh, obviously with a hammer, me, you know, hammer with a status, you know, sleep or whatever it is, right? Um, and then you pull out the other hammer for like when they're down, you know, they're like, oh, you know, and then just whack the shit out of them, right? For pure damage, you know? Or you just have like the same weapon. But it's like, oh God, this is that <laughs> green sharpness. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> See, I wonder though how how sharpening is going to work because you're gonna have to sharpen two weapons, right? Hopefully, there's like a better sharpener, <laughs> um, or maybe change up the mechanic a little bit. But I uh, probably what I would do is like I don't know, bow gun, like bow gun and uh, some physical weapon or like a hammer, or gun lance, you know, type of thing. Yeah, but yeah, that sounds pretty cool though. Um, lastly, we do have Phantom Blade Zero, which was like, like I don't know what it is. It looks like a Souls-like game. I'm not too sure, but it looks cool just looking at it. You know, um, there's some hands-on stuff for each other um, game show, including Gamescom and Tokyo Game Show later on. And I think it's about it. So it was mixed. Um mixed to like negative because I would say that a lot of these show uh a lot of the companies have want to have their own show. 
you know, and um, they want to have their they want to show off their thing at their own time and their own grounds, right? You know, you know, some of them don't want to pay fucking like you know two hundred fifty thousand dollars just for do a what a uh, one minute, right? Whereas, you know, if you do it yourself, it's like why why you know why would you right? Why would you do do that stuff right? That's why these sort of things are kind of like dying, right? It's it's kind of a, becoming a lost art because everyone's doing it themselves. Back when uh, Nintendo started doing it themselves, EA started to do it themselves. You know, that's why like E3 was kind of starting to die out because you know times were just changing. Things were just getting expensive. People don't want to like just leave their office. You can just do it right right in, then and there theoretically. But somehow, Jeff is here. He's doing his own thing. You know? Somehow. <laughs> yeah. There was one thing. I think they talked about this at the Summer Game Fest as well that uh, Wario didn't mention. And it's that Star Rail did come out with a reveal that, um, you know, that's supposed to be like a character that was like silhouetted. And they were like, oh, it's the new legendary swordsman or whatever. And it turned out to be a um one of the major characters already which is march 7th one of your mm -hmm. default characters and she turns out to be the new swordsman or whatever so uh meaning that march 7th will have a different class with a different weapon and different elements of course so and I'm, on top of that she has a new outfit so um i guess i can pull it up here with like uh, star rail stuff so star rail news or right, I just do it here actually um yeah right here so this is March 7th and a different outfit you know I can pull up March 7th sky that is her uh default outfit here she's a um uh, a shielder i guess you could say who uses a bow a bow and arrow here though that's still unknown i guess no she's a hunt character so that means she's going to be really good with um single target damage and um she will have an element called imaginary which basically means light um here she is a uh, uh ice so default, she's an ice preservation unit or a shielder. Here she'd be an imaginary DPS unit. So, so neat. I get. Uh, it's just a matter of like, you know, you know why? Why? Why is this happening? Is she learning or she? Uh, she is learning, yes. But but why? How does it happen? What's the context? You know. All right. So. Um. Yeah. Uh, how did you feel about the uh, Tokyo or not Tokyo? Sorry, um, Summer Game Fest. Uh, overall, there were some like, well, this is personal games I'm interested, in, mm -hmm. and it was actually mildly entertaining the new um past ones because you know we were flooded with like ads and mm. like, things that shouldn't even be there or. And such like that. So I give it a a low eight because that's personal. Mm -hmm. uh, now for like an overall, like without being biased or anything, it's it's still like a high seven. Okay. Okay. Mr. Jeff is is, is learning. He uh <laughs> tries definitely to um take in these sort of criticism and stuff like that and try to like make it work and stuff, so you know, yeah, credits credit to him or kudos, you know, for trying. Obviously, he, he is passionate, you know. Uh whether you don't like him or like him or whatever. Uh he tries to deliver these uh these things in a much uh you know as appeal in an appealing way as much as possible. So um you know, he's still 
you know, sort of learning the ropes in, in some ways at least. But, um... It, yeah, it seems like I think the show itself was fine. It's just the actual, like, games that were revealed were, like, very hit or miss, depending on what you like, obviously. But even then, it's like, you know, for me, it's, it's shot Sonic and Monster Hunter Wilds that got me go uh, kind of excited. Or, or, or Mo Wilds, yes, very excited. Shadow stuff, very excited. But other than that, like, all this other stuff is like, all right, you know, you're right, like, Oh yeah, Killer Bean. And then Killer Bean, yeah, Killer Bean is kind of like the, the dark horse for me. I'm very curious about how this game is going to play, you know? So that's pretty much it on my end. Um, uh, what was like, like the one game you're like, oh my god, you know, I can't wait, or if, there, if, if, if any, you know? Sorry, my dog is just rolling. <laughs> okay. But um, the one game out of that, out of everything, is that one. I'll go back up. Uh, it's that indie game. Up, 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 up. It's the one with the lady, um, the lady and the, and the wolf. Never. Oh, 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 oh. is it up? Okay. Oh, this one. Right okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Right, right. Yeah. Never looks interesting. The, the art style. It's pleasing to me. Like mm -hmm, it's not mm -hmm. hurting my eyes. It it feels like Miyazaki inspired. Very yeah. Yes. The, the so, yeah. Um, I like this. Yeah, I think this was what? revealed last year. I think right. So yeah, it was revealed last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it looks like it is coming along, but um, yeah, coming twenty twenty four. So it's coming this year. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely one of those like very artsy um. Indie games for sure, but yeah, that's fair. Maybe, maybe if the guys are interested in this game, maybe I might hop on for a uh, cuff bust. Maybe, very potential. Maybe. All right, that's it for uh, Summer Game Fest. I don't know if there's any more of it. I'm kind of confused on that, but uh, yeah, that's essentially a big, big chunk of it, right? So, all right, let's go on to the game's news. All right, so Bing. yeah, right. <laughs> Bing. Um, did you ca ca catch wind of this one, the Ari skin for League of Legends? Yeah, because apparently it's a, uh, I guess like if it, you wanted everything or something, it's a, it's 500 bucks or something like that. And, and even Faker, who is um the one that they're trying to uh, attach it to, who's a very good um, um league player, mm -hmm. been there for a long time in the uh, professional league um circuit, mm -hmm. hates this. Oh, well. Well, he hates because of the price tag again. Yes. And the thing with Faker, he never uses alt skins or, you know, uh, anniversary skins. He sticks to their default skin. Yeah, because I heard talk about how these skins actually alter how um, professional or competitive players, like, uh, take visual cues because of yeah. how... It affects the uh, um, the visual attacks, right? Like the visual particle effects and everything. It actually changes with the skins, so that's why yep. um, prof professional players have mixed feelings. I'm assuming, anyway, when it comes to these skins. So, is that is that uh, true in any way? Or yeah, you're not off the mark because there are some skins that the visual cues and the audio cues are different. Oh, okay. Okay. So if one attack sounds like "cha," mm -hmm, another mm -hmm. skin might make it go "chu" or something. Mm -hmm, so it's like, mm -hmm. Ooh. It's like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. So you know, if you mentally condition your mind to only hear like that one, mm -hmm, yeah, um, audio cue, and wow. then you 
accidentally chew not accidentally but then you put a, a different skin on and it has a different audio cue it kind of messes you up yeah yeah because even like fighting game players use sound and such as a cue to like time their combos or something like that you know they get into that rhythm and the sound is does play a part in a way you know that's why they have like those headphone setups they want to like you know make sure they can hear or whatever um same with visual stuff right and that's why also um they pick certain costumes to mess with other players right with their hitbox and everything that's why um you know bashi Zang zangief picked the red color for the mecha Z zangief because it, he was constantly red and then when he flexed that's when he turns red but he was already red so he's like he, you know it's, it actually like messes up when he's you know flexing or not in the flex state or whatever it is it it, it, it if you know uh messes people with that but obviously capcom soon learned that and they banned that costume you know stuff like that um does add to the point where yes these costumes or skins do change up even like the competitive side of things more ways than one you know so that's why like people have like those problems with uh the particle effects being changed because they're so used to seeing that on their screen and especially if that new particle effect looks sim similar to that of other champions um attacks that really messes things up right obviously for the competitive side of things you know it's like oh shit this this attack is coming uh i will hit this ability oh wait that's not that's not the attack so it's like oh well fuck i'm on i i i i misread <laughs> yeah i misread i'm on cooldown now i can't do my shit right that's pretty important if that's really the case right obviously you want to have your abilities right at the ready you know when you're when you're about to initiate that comeback or plan or whatever right you know when you're when you're in those certain, certain lanes right but yeah so obviously this 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 shit sucks um you know it's like this sort of model is being carried over from valorant because valorant has like those animated skins with their guns and they like cost like over 100 bucks just to like have like the full experience of those skins there's like tier different tiers of those like legendary skins or whatever and just like it's ridiculous and now they're coming up with that like 500 bucks like fuck man it's not even microtransactions anymore it's macro transactions it's so big of a cost so yeah basically this shit sucks so yeah <laughs> No one likes it. it. It sucks, and Riot is just milking or hoping to milk that skin because they attached it to like one of their uh... yeah professional player yeah yep. Mm -hmm. And then lo and behold, like who would have thought he doesn't like it? It's like ugh, yeah, no shit. Like who would want to pay five hundred dollars for a little digital thing that one day will go away? Because you know, like League of Legends, it's not forever. You know, those kind of games aren't forever. All right. Uh, we're on the home stretch here. So let's uh, hit this now. Let me see. Oh, yeah. I have this. The reason why I hit that because. So remember, uh, Minus One came out on Netflix and other streaming platforms. And it became at one point number one on Netflix. I was like, whoa, who would have know, right? Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk it, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I didn't even, I didn't even know that, but uh, they had a dub version of the, on Netflix or whatever. And I heard uh, very mixed things yeah, about that. Yeah, there was a lot of mixed stuff. Yeah, like a lot of people who heard the dub does not like how they. Uh made the the last scene um you know sounded like reddit yeah like it, uh <laughs> it had the same impact because it's like it because it was like a different line or something it was like it was like a it was modified or something like that the line was like changed yeah, it was modified mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, it's because I think they wanted to match the mouth movement, you know, so it's like, that's bound to happen, unfortunately. So, yeah, yeah, you know, go in with that, that mindset, like, yeah, it's going to be different, you know. But, you know, just like a lot of things, there is a place for dubbed, right? Because people don't want to read. I get it, right? You just want to listen to the movie and enjoy it for what it is, you know, without having to read. There are people who just have terrible attention spans because they have like ADHD or something, severe cases of it. They can't keep up with the text and having to like keep up with the, what's going on, on the screen. You know, I, I get it. I get it. But um, that does come at a cost that you miss out on like the context the actual meeting and like the original intentions and stuff like that so that does stink so you know take it for what you will i guess but nonetheless it's number one on those streaming platforms right so big dub once again for the big g so i'm all for that uh okay but uh, unfortunately this big g isn't going uh, getting so much of a w because uh, animation studio Gynex is actually going bankrupt. Very, very unfortunate. I believe these are the guys who at least made, uh, what was it? Um, Grin Lagon before those guys split off to make their own studio. And also it contained the same people from uh, Evangelion, if I'm correct. Yeah, they have a pretty good legacy, but um, times are rough, I guess, for the studio. Because, let me see, so, uh, oh yeah, so, okay, wow. The company have been facing financial difficulties since 2012, which notably led many artists and staff members to move elsewhere, um, such as uh uh Kehara or Kahara um Trigger you all know that one as well as com uh, companies parallel to Gynex bearing similar names but legally different in 2019 Gynex's brand new boss was arrested for sexual assault uh 2020 a new board was formed to try to turn things around with Anno who was still a uh, Gynex shareholder despite his creative departure in 20, uh, uh, 2007 and uh, uh, when Kata was found, uh, founded and members of other companies including Trigger, Kato Kawa, uh, King Records. One of their missions was to preserve and transfer certain rights and intellectual property notably works. Uh, Evangelion now belongs to Kata Grin Lagon to Trigger, as well as the guy next brand, which uh, belongs to Kata. However, the finances and debts, debts guy next have always remained in the red. Other companies involved in the board, uh, guy next board, obviously reasonably couldn't take the repayment of debts that's caused by the mismanagement in, uh, of previous persons in charge. Legal proceedings of unpaid debts were initiated in May. 2024 prompting the decision to file bankruptcy so yeah very unfortunate um yeah yeah and i remember that they were kind of in the gutter for like long time over 10 years and yeah so it looks like yeah evangelion is with kara or Lagan, which explains like the collaborations with Trigger stuff with Gurren Lagan. And then now, like, yeah, um, it's very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Yeah, because like um, they did Evangelion, they did Gurren Lagan, so on and so forth. And, you know, I always say it, but you hate to see it, you know, when a place of where like you know some great anime came out like some of the greatest ones to somebody are like you know 
show more and more signs that it's like dying off, you know. But at least with Evangelion, you know, somebody's doing it. Gorilla God can carry on technically. Um, but it's like really, you know, what other Gynex works can be preserved though, right? I'm sure there's more. I guess with Gunbuster, for example, no one really picked it up yet. So it's like, it's hopefully not <laughs> lost, right? Hopefully it doesn't turn into lost media. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know? Um, let me go ahead and check real quick here. What else have they done? Let me see. Oh, they did Nadia. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. They did Nadia, Neon, uh, Evangelion. Um, let me see. Magical shop, uh, shopping arcade. Abenobashi. Um. You saying funny words there, um, Magic Man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny corpse princess guard of belt oh my god panty stalking with guard of belt that's a that's another like very uh strongly cult followed like series a lot of, i've seen a lot of fan art still it's crazy um oh they did midaka box they animated it oh yeah that's a that's another shonen series from or shonen jump right yeah from yeah, a long time ago season. yep yeah. um magica wars okay cutie honey live action from a long time ago gun buster versus die buster the grand Lagan movie obviously so, um, a oh, fully coolie OVA shit or yeah, no, no, fully coolie. Yeah. They did that. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Oh my God. With Cobra. Yeah. They co-produced it with, uh, IG production IG. Yeah. There's gun buster. Yeah. Their, their OVAs were pretty lit. They're pretty lit. As well as, um, like, Nadia and stuff like that. Ah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shame, you know? It's a real shame. The Gainax trademark has tra was transferred to Kara, while Kara was, uh, will also assist with Gainax on the transfer of all their remaining properties to different owners. Yeah, so we're already seeing that happening. So, yep. Yeah. Um, any comment on Gynex? Pretty much, you know, what hasn't been said for the um workers, you know. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, it does get picked up by somebody or merge with like another yeah. big studio, like uh, Madhouse. Right. Something. Yeah. Right. Something to get these uh talented people, you know, some work. They got home a new home, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, for sure. It's always it's always a pretty bad situation whenever, like, you know, a company buys another company off, or a company goes bankrupt, or they just or it just has to end, right? The workers always gets fucked, one way or the other, somehow, right? So yeah, obviously, um, wishes, big wishes to, um, to the workers, man. Hopefully they find work. Alrighty. Well, there is actually, uh, something that somebody here is, uh, you know, getting giddy about, let's just put it that way. So did you watch the trailer here for Venom, the last yeah. dance? <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm not going to play the whole thing again, but like, um, uh, I'm going to skim through some parts, especially with the, what was it? The last part was it? 
Uh, yeah, the last part, I was like, once I saw that last part, oh, and also this part, like someone, like, screenshot in there, like, look, you can see this dick. I was like, oh, that's mm-hmm. lovely, thank you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the last part was like, oh, I, in my head, I was like, oh, here, here comes the internet artists working their asses off. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, I was like, mm-hmm. thank you, timeline. <laughs> Put the phone down. Yeah. But yep, this is the last of the um, Venom series. Mm-hmm. With the so Sony lineup. Where this, yeah. What's going to happen? Yeah. So we don't know what's going to happen to the, uh, you know, to Venom. Yeah. Is it really coming now to the uh, MCU or? Mm-hmm. Yep. There's or the... is he just going to be thrown into the Sony vault? Yeah. Yeah, well, at least we got a Venom horse out of it, though. <laughs> oh yeah, the, them them artists they 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 went crazy on. on yeah, I kind of I kind of saw that. I kind of caught wind of that. Yeah. It does look pretty cool, to be fair. But I have yet to watch uh, what was it? Oh yeah, Venom two or the second Venom movie, and yeah, of course this one. So I have some catching up to do on that side of things. But um the rest of the movie, what do you what do you what do you think? I mean Are you uh It's gonna be stupid it's gonna yeah. be stupid fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> I mean I'm I'm going to miss this this dynamic of Venom. I mean, a lot of people hate this dynamic of Venom, and it's like, you know, this is actually how Eddie and Venom interacts in the comics. Well, depending which comic you read. Yes. Yeah. And But again, like, these comic book movies aren't for everybody. They're always right. going to be the nitpickers. Mm-hmm. They'll nitpick the most stupidest thing ever. And it's like, Jesus Christ, just watch the damn movie. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, those those people's like, this is fucking stupid. It's like, okay. Don't yeah. watch it. We'll watch it. You don't have to watch it. No one's forcing <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. You make it like this is like someone's forcing you to watch this this type of movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it looks again, it looks stupid fun. Yeah. Yeah. guess you could say this is the best that sony has right now besides like the spider-verse stuff liar <laughs> you you know you you know morbius was, <laughs> was fucking top notch um madam web fucking broke box office you know right i mean there. it did break the box office in <laughs> some way <laughs> somebody's broken at the box office <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! But I, I just love how Madam Web got so much, or the actress that played Madam Web got so much hatred for speaking like the truth. Like she didn't really like do she didn't like doing the damn movie. So why would she actually care, give like give a fuck? Right, right, yeah. And then Sony, Sony's trying to play it off as like. It's like, oh, it was her bad acting and stuff. It's like, no, it's actually your writers. <laughs> mm-hmm. An actor is as good as the writing. And if the writing is fucking horrible. Yeah, they can only carry so much, right? You know? Yeah, just because you, you have like a a big name star doesn't mean you uh, that movie's going to shut out um Emmys and Oscars and shit. Yeah, like, you gotta have good writing to make the actors like invest into the project too it's not you know they're not gonna just automatically be like all right you know coming in i'm gonna make a help make you guys make a great movie man you know it'll be fine no man everyone's gotta be firing all on all cylinders man they gotta do all do their part right director the audio crew you know the writers of course actors 
all the other staff, right? Everyone's got to be doing their part. Mm-hmm. If one of the important ones, which is writing, is going to keep fucking up like that, it's like, eh, well, why should I care? You know? Yeah. Movie's already shitty, so why should I give my all, right? So that's, you know. Also, and also, if the work environment is not like, oh yeah, 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 obviously, right. You know, it could be, it, you know, it could also be like the late writers fall or something, or the directors fall also. I mean, we don't know, right? You can only, you know, speak so much about, it, I guess, you know, what of what happens behind the doors, but man. Shitty writing is shitty writing, you know? So. We've seen that across, like, a number of things nowadays. So that's why we have, like, something like the boys to kind of, like, help alleviate that, like, relief that, like, some of the, the, some of the, the superhero fatigue that a lot of people have been getting, you know? So. Yep, hopefully The Last Dance is a good one, you know, for Venom. And yeah, so I can definitely say I have to catch up on it. So, all right, I think we're on the last bit of it. Shoes out of nowhere with Amazon, right? They are coming out, and this is officially from RGG Studio. So, you gotta go to the studio. It's making a live action, like a Dragon Yakuza series on Amazon Prime of all things, right? For October 24th. And, um, yeah, that's rad. Yeah, from Xbox, right? And apparently the actor playing, um, Kiryu is this guy. Are you, are you familiar with this, yep. with this actor? So, yep, he, for Tokusatsu fans, he's our common Rider Drive. Hmm, okay, okay, okay. But just seeing, I saw like someone took a picture of him like working out. I was like, Jesus Christ, you you really did bulk up. Mm, okay, so he's actually in, in the out. show. Yeah. He 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 had muscles, but it was like he wasn't you bulky. Know, like, yeah, like he, yeah, he, like you could actually put on a on a t shirt and it will still look, you know, f- it will look well. Yeah, like yeah. And now looking at him with like old oh, fucking bulky is like Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. If you ever come back to Kamen Rider, a lot of people will be like, who are you? Right. Yeah. I'm sure they have to, like, modify his, like, his suit, too. Because <laughs> he's too big. <laughs> um, I, don't but, know, I don't know what you feel yet, but he's too big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the actor's name is Ryoma Takeuchi for uh, playing Kiryu. So I'm guessing this is going to be, like, um, Yakuza Zero desk, like this should be in the beginning, you know, when Kitty's like younger and stuff like that, still learning the ropes kind of thing. So I'm guessing anyway, they didn't really explain anything. It's like, oh, and then a lot, a lot of people are already um like predicting, probably at the end of the the season, um Majima. Oh Majima, up. that kind of yeah, that's kind of what happens anyway, because like, um you know, spoiler, you know, yeah, at, at the like, end of it, yeah. He, they finally meet, you know, at the end. <laughs> well, I know it's like late, later in the series that, you know, Majima appears most in the most random way, but I kind of want Majima the first time he meets Kiryu is coming out of the freaking manhole cover. Oh, the manhole cover, yes. Hello. The Majima Hello. everywhere. The Majima everywhere system. That was great. That was actually really fun. Yeah. It's funny because though, because when he does come out, uh there <laughs> he's easy to exploit because he because uh, the hit stun in that game was like ridiculous so you kind of just like go behind him and just keep jabbing and he's just like ooh 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 and like, he can't move so it's like oh man that sucks for Majima <laughs> but uh, you know someone someone drew a fan art of Kiryu doing you know one of the poses for a common rider it's pretty funny he's yeah, he's got all the stuff like the belt the the wrist thing the key <laughs> is that from drive or is it just like a yeah, that, okay. that's drive. Okay, that's okay. Drives is um 
belt and the uh, the cars that he uses. The cars, yeah, and then the the wrist thing. So pretty neat. That's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. I like it. But yeah, man. I mean, I'll I'll definitely so catch I guess, it. Um, he's pretty much becoming on what uh. Um, what uh, Takeru Sa Sato, who was Comrade Deno, went through to um to further his uh acting career. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. What, what Takeru did was did the um Rurouni Kenshin movies. Oh, so now, that's cool. Now okay. his now it's his turn, Yoma. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Takeru son's turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, this is a good series, man. Like, you know. Prime has been going in on the uh, live action video game stuff. I mean, Paula's been good, so uh, hopefully they do this right. And, and for some people that may or may not know, there was a like a uh, Yakuza movie made a long time ago. Long time ago, yes, there is a pre-existing one, yes. So it's not the first time, but it definitely is the first time in a long time for sure. Very unexpected for sure. That's one way to put it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely catch it. You know, I'll watch it. And I'll uh, give it a review. You know, that, fir that fair college try. And yep. Looking forward to October 24th. You know, I, I wonder how long they're going to do it. How uh, Are they going to have multiple seasons? Just a one-time off thing? I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. We'll definitely see. See, my question is, if they're going to do the Yakuza 0 storyline, then are they going to bring back the big three in there with the original actors of it? Because, um... Kuze will be a really, really good, really great um, addition, because he's, like, really, he's, like, the popular boss from that game. And um, this guy, Hitoshi Ozawa, is like um, very renowned to play. <laughs> yeah, it was made for him. Yeah, very renowned for like doing Yakuza stuff. He's like made to be a you know a Yakuza character. So him, he, he uh, yeah, I mean, I I'm pretty sure he can still nail it too. I mean, he still has the the chops and everything. So hopefully. They'll include him in there somewhere. You know, if it's a different character, I mean, as long as he's doing it, it's, you know, I'm all for it. So. Alrighty. Um, that is it. That's all I got for this edition of the Hypecast, unless you have anything else to throw in there before we sign off. Not really. I mean, for like, like stuff besides playing like video games. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, I've been watching um a slice of life uh, anime. Oh, nice, nice. Fucking cute as fuck. <laughs> uh, it's called Tonari no um, Yokai San. It's fucking cute. So Is for it... like me and Hawk, we we know what yokai's are, but yes. this one kind of makes it a little like step further, and it's like just shows like, hey, what if yokai's were like nice, or well, some yokai's were nice, and you know you, they were your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Is like, it this? Yeah, it's that one. Okay, okay, okay. Interesting. Oh wow. So the cat was an ordinary cat until um I guess it became a yokai. Yeah, like a nekomata or something cuz yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, nekomata. And they kind of explain like lore of how, you know, yokais are born. The crow Well, that's a tengu. But yeah, tengu, a yeah. Crow. His name is Jiro and then that's funny. a little girl that so it's like one of those like um, called uh, her name is uh, Mu Chan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So 
So kind of like a little nice slice of life, but the first episode was pretty much like, wow, this kind of hurts a little. Okay. It's like, Chan, what happened to your family? They died. Oh, okay. It's, like, it's one of those ones. Okay. Like, shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like you're holding, uh-huh. you're holding your heart like, ah, I'm dying. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Let's save me. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a reference to Luffy. Oh, the, the oh yeah, yeah, cat. Straw Hat. Yeah, it's, yeah. Of course. Like, look at that. How yeah. could you not think of One Piece? And the cat's name is uh, Wuchio. Okay. But yeah. But yeah, they kind of go into, like, lore of, like, you know, what yokais pretty much are. Yeah, the basics of it. Okay. Like, oh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Jiro, even though he's a Tengu, he's actually the guardian of the village. And Mm -hmm. if you do know, like, Tengu lore, they kill you if you go into their territory. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. But it's a cute anime. Yeah. So far, nine episodes, but yeah, it's, it's cute. It's a nice... It's a nice play uh, pace or different like change of pace, yeah. Um, yeah, change of pace of like you know all the shonen jump and action stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just kind of. I mean, there, there, there is fights in here against other yokai, but it's not like every That's... episode is a fight. No, it's like yeah. every episode is like a slice of life. Like the episode I just finished. Um, I need to rewatch it and hear it again because um, one of the uh, yokais, I think, is a male. Mm. He's also married to a human, a human male. So I'm like, mm-hmm. is this a, a gay couple? Oh, okay. But okay, it looks. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it looks interesting. Cute. I mean, yeah. looks cute. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So if you guys want to watch it, it's on Crunchyroll. Gotcha. Everything's on Crunchyroll, man. They they bought the fucking uh, they bought Funimation. They're like the one sole access to sub anime and shit. It's funny. Funny how how all of that worked yeah, out. Was it <laughs> the opening? The opening um song. For this anime is so cute, but then again, after you watch the first episode, it's like Jesus Christ, it's like, how did I know that this anime is like <laughs> this song is gonna be a lie? Mm-hmm. Look how pretty and happy and wonderful everyone. First episode, I hate you. <laughs> it's like the false advertisement. They like to do the thing where it's like the what do you call it? the anime is like really dark, but they have like those really fluffy light whimsical whimsical and... like you know like you know it's it's rainbows and sunshine kind of openings or endings and stuff man yeah and, and you're like <laughs> 911 what's your emergency i want to report a liar <laughs> yeah yeah it's like um you see all these characters in the opening but they all like they're like dead in like the first episode or something <laughs> oh man I love anime for that, right? Sometimes. Yep. All right. I think that's uh, all we got. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been uh, yeah, a decent time. Look at that. So. Been a hot mess. Yeah. It's been, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Summer Game Fest and all that stuff. Anyway, so uh, we'll see uh, next week. Hopefully, we, uh, hopefully, I have some. Uh, to talk about probably probably the rest of Summer Game Fest, whatever that shit is. I mean, usually they they go on pretty long, right? Like for the entire month of June or something. I, I forget how that how that shit works. But... I think it's like from uh yesterday up to like maybe Wednesday. Right. It's, it's like a week long event. Right? Okay, okay, okay. Whatever gets uh reported or whatever comes out anymore on Summer Game Fest will likely talk about it we'll see depending on what it is so either way thank you very much 
and we hope to see you all in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs> I <laughs> can't